It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. Or we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. Day 24, Updates and Feedback. One of the most critical elements found in the 2020 update is the need to use the information you obtain, whether through a risk assessment, root cause analysis, investigation, hotline report, or any other manner to remediate the situation which allowed it to arise. Under evolving updates, the questions were posed. How often has the company updated its risk assessment and reviewed its compliance policies, procedures, and practices? Has the company undertaken a gap analysis to determine if a particular area of risks which are not sufficiently addressed in its policies, controls, or training? What steps has the company taken to determine whether the policies, procedures, and practices make sense for a particular business or segment or subsidiaries? Does the company review and adapt its compliance program based upon the lessons learned from its own misconduct or that of companies it's faced? Your company should establish a regular monitoring program to spot issues and address them. Effective monitoring means applying a consistent set of protocols, checks, and controls tailored to your company's risk to detect and remediate compliance programs on an ongoing basis. To address this, your company team, or rather your compliance team, should be checking in routinely with the local finance departments in your foreign offices to ask if they have recently noticed any accounting regularities. Regional directors should be required to keep tabs on improper activity in countries where they manage. These ongoing efforts demonstrate your company is serious about compliance. In an interview with Matt Kelly, uh, Wei Chin said, we wanted people to see that we put a lot of emphasis on evidence and data. You don't just tell us you have a hotline, you show us you know it's working and how you're using the information you gain from the hotlines. When you say you have a great compliance portable, don't just show us screenshots of it, show us hit rates and how you use that data to help refine how you communicate with your audience. The question then becomes, how are you doing so? The 2020 update explained it in this way. Prosecutors may reward efforts to promote improvement and sustainability in evaluating a particular compliance program works in practice. Prosecutors should consider revisions to corporate compliance programs in light of lessons learned. Proactive efforts like this may not be rewarded in connection with any form of resolution or prosecution, but also avert problems down the road. It is a function of the CCO to reinforce the vision and goals of the compliance function, where assessment and updating are critical to an ongoing best practices compliance program. If you follow this protocol, you put a mechanism in place to demonstrate your company's commitment to compliance by following through on some tensions to set forth in your strategic plan. What should you do with this information? Put a strategic plan in place to implement your findings by using the following. One, review the goals of the tr- strategic plan. This requires you to arrange a time for the CCO and team to review the goals of the strategic plan, which the CCO should lead to determine how this goal in the plan measures up to the implementation in your company. Two, design an execution plan. The KISS method, keep it simple, sir, is the best to move forward. This would suggest that for each compliance program, there should be a simply, simple and straightforward plan to ensure the goal in question is being addressed. Three, put accountabilities in place. <clears throat> in any plan of execution, there must be accountabilities attached to them. This requires the CCO or other senior compliance department representatives to put these in place and then mandate a report requirement on how the task assigned is being achieved. Four, schedule the next plan of review. There should be a regular view of the process. It allows such that any such problems may arise to be detected and corrected more quickly than if the meetings are held at a less frequent basis. Continuous monitoring is a key step, but it is only the first step. It is not simply that you tested your compliance program, but you did something with the information you obtained to improve your program. So what are today's three key takeaways? We're going to have a quick word from our sponsor, and we'll be right back with today's three key takeaways. Innovation can come through a new way to think about and use data going forward. So in addition to your hotline, how are you 
inputting data that you obtain as a compliance practitioner? Are you looking at your policies and procedures and seeing who's reviewing them on your portal? Where are they doing business? What types of questions are they asking? Additionally, what type of questions are coming into the compliance department? Do you have a log of questions? Do you know where the questions came from? Do they relate to a specific geo region? Do they relate to a specific product? Do they relate even to a specific customer? How are the training sessions going? What questions are being asked in training? Are you cataloging those questions? Are you following up with answers to those questions? Are you following up three, six, nine months down the road? How are you using that information to incorporate it back into updating or, in the parlance of the Department of Justice, continuous improvement of your compliance program? Number two, have a plan in place to use the information garnered in your monitoring incorporated back into your compliance program. It's not simply enough to have uh, continuous monitoring. How are you going to use that information going forward? And number three, always remember that document, document, document is critical if the regulators ever come knocking. This is Tom Fox again. Thank you for listening to this episode of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program. I hope you will join me for the entire month of January where I take a look at some of the significant changes in compliance and FCPA enforcement. 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a part of the Compliance Podcast Network. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.